a point of order, Joanne Hayes. Thank you. I seek leave of the House to, once the speeches are completed for this bill and the way it is sung, that we rise to the House. OK. So, so the question is that the completion of the voting on this bill uh, and, and, and the associated wire uh, that the House uh, rise. Is there any objection to that? There appears to be none. That is agreed. Kilburn Davis. Tēnā Mr oh, Speaker. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just hopeful. Rangi tāne, tēnā rā koutou. Tēnā rā koutou nau mai haere mai ki rota tēnei te whare o te motu. Uh, Hari koana mātou te kete i a koutou kei raro i te tūnui. Nā reira nau mai haere mai whakatau mai. Uh, e manahi, tēnei hau mihi atu ki a koe. Uh, Maharaki ahau, te, te taema i kaui atu ahau i tōku kaihana Nathan Davis ki Waingani o koutou uh, hei prihimana mo te taone o, o Danny Vick. Uh, Hore kau i te mōhio mehe me he prihimana pai kore take rānei. <laughs> mehe mea kei te oro tonu ko kaingatia i a koutou rānei. Engari, uh, ko pai uh, taku taenga atu ki Waingani o koutou nā reira tēnā rā koe e manahi. Um, Mr Speaker, uh, I'd just like to acknowledge Rangi Tane for, uh, for being here today in the House of the People, and I'd just uh, like to acknowledge uh, Manahi Paiwai up there. It was, uh, again, when I got booted out of Parliament in 2011 and had, and had a bit of spare time on my hands, my cousin Nathan Davis was appointed the uh, police sergeant, I think, in Danny Burke, and so uh, I, I and others of the whānau went down and had the pleasure of being hosted by Rangi Tane and Danny Virk. And uh, as I said, I wouldn't know whether he's a good cop or a bad cop or whether he's still alive or whether they, they ate him. Uh, but <laughs> <coughs> um, so be it. <laughs> he, he, he's, your, he's your guy's problem now. <coughs> um, Mr Speaker, the, I just want to go over a bit of the history of the claim. And I see that um, in 2004, things really started around the Waitangi Tribunal. Uh, there were a series of meetings and a report was written. Now, so 2004, in March of 2004, this, this process sort of kicked off and now we're in 2016. And uh, we have to acknowledge the length of time that it took uh, to get to this stage now where Rangitane are almost at the finishing line. And I'd just like you all to consider this, uh, and I would appreciate that you're this, this process has probably worn you out, and there's people that have started the journey and, and uh, aren't here to finish the journey. Uh, but just in those evenings when you're exhausted and tired and, and thinking we, we're almost at the end of the process, just to lift your spirits, all you need to say is, thank God we're not Ngāpui. <laughs> <laughs> because... Our journey has been just as long and difficult and fraught, and we're not even at the starting line. <laughs> well, it, we're about two inches from the starting line. We've been running the race for eight years, and uh, we're two inches just from the starting line, but that could all be... Um, uh, we could, we could be, be putting the car into reverse and backing backwards... Uh, if things don't work out in the next 24 hours or so, Minister. You know, and what a different place New Zealand was in 2004. Helen Clark was the Prime Minister, uh, the English were the Rugby World Cup champions, and I had dark hair. <laughs> and you were skinny. <laughs> and I was skinny. I, think, uh, I thought the Speaker wasn't allowed to be brought into the debate. <laughs> but he couldn't help himself there. <clears throat> uh, Mr Speaker, We've, we've, everyone has tra uh, traversed, uh, I won't say transgressed, as uh, Nathan Guy said yesterday, traversed the issues around uh, the Rangitani settlement. And reading through the, the bill, what strikes me again, and it strikes me in just about every bill, is the significant land loss that uh, occurred. And when I say significant, uh, I... It was the uh, Manga Tainuka block in particular, not because of the, um, the, the landmark there that I see when I drive past Manga Tainuka, but in Manga Tainuka there were significant land holdings, uh, over 60,000 acres. 
The Crown applied pressure to purchase this land, even though the recognised leaders of Rangitane opposed the sale. By 1890, sorry, from between 1877 and 1890, the Crown had acquired over 85% of the Mangatainoka block. Today, less than 1% of the original block remains in Māori land title. And we should never, ever underestimate the impact, the cultural impact, the economic impact, uh, the impact in just about every facet of the, the people's lives uh, that, that landlessness has, um, has impacted on them. It's happened all around New Zealand. And again, you know, that's why these settlements are so significant, why they are so uh, important, because we need to start uh, turning that around, reversing that, uh, those impacts. Uh, and again, you know, any quantum is just going to be a fraction of what is owed. It's only going to be a fraction of what is lost. But we need to, uh, and we need to keep that in the forefront of our minds because, again, there'll be people out there in the country saying, oh, look what all these Māoris are getting. They've got their hands out and they're going to get all these millions of dollars and it's all, you know, a waste of money. We've got to stop focusing on what's being returned. We've got to look at how much was lost and keep that in perspective. It is uh, so important. Uh, Rangitane, back in the day, uh, around the mid-1840s, enjoyed considerable benefits from the annual rents and trade with new arrivals who leased large areas of land. The Crown applied pressure on Wairarapa Māori to end the leases and to sell their lands. So here they were, they had leases, they were leasing out the land, they were, they were basically being businessmen, entrepreneurs, doing uh, what people do in a strong economy. But through the pressure of the Crown, that all, all went. Uh, in 1853, between 1853 and 84, the Crown acquired about 1.5 million acres of land. Now, earlier today I was talking about how much land Taranaki lost, 1.2 million acres. Rangitane, and I said uh, in the earlier debate, 1.2 million acres, if we, if we just uh, divided those into quarter acre sections, there would be enough quarter acre sections to house, to have a house for every man, woman and child in New Zealand. And yet Rangitane lost more than Taranaki. Uh, 1.5 million acres. So just today we've been talking about close to 3 million acres of Māori land that has been confiscated or removed from Māori possession. Imagine what Māori could be achieving if we had those 3 million acres now in our possessions, in our possession. That 1.5 million acres was 60% of all Rangitane land. Now, we, we need to let these figures sink in and, and to just realise and appreciate the enormity of the loss for Rangitane. <clears throat> Mr Speaker, oh. Mr Speaker, uh, I would again just like to acknowledge the people in the gallery and all the, the other tribes that have been here today. And hope, the hope is, is that the, all of our bills, all of these bills move through the House quickly so that people, the people can get on with actually creating the success that we should have had over the last 170 odd years. And might I say, and I'll get down on my hands and knees tonight and pray that my whanaunga up in Ngāpuhi do the right thing and follow the lead that the tribes have done today and just get on with the process of settling their claims and being successful, Māori taking care, uh, taking charge of our own destinies. Nā reira tātou mā, hurirauna i te whare tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.